afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls. And uh, in a few minutes' time, the uh, Wildcat helicopter will be approaching from the sea. And a huge welcome uh, from the team, uh, correction, for, from the team to say thank you uh, for coming here. It's been three years since the Wildcat helicopter was at Southport, and that absence uh, is deli they're delighted to be back here uh, to display at Southport. So the, uh, the Wildcat helicopter is making its approach now. It's about uh, two to three miles uh, out at sea, that speck just above the horizon. He'll be doing a low uh, and a fast approach and then climbing into a cyclic uh, climb uh, before doing a series of wing overs and uh, nose overs. All of the manoeuvres that uh, the uh, helicopter will be doing today are things that the pilots uh, practice on a regular basis and they're used during their normal day-to-day -day work. The helicopter itself uh, is a, uh, said to work as a maritime attack helicopter. It's based at 825 uh, Naval Air Squadron in Somerset and uh, the uh, squadron trains engineers and aircrew in how to maintain and fly uh, the helicopter. All of the aircrew that leave uh, and the engineers that leave 825 move across to 815 uh, Naval Air Squadron, which is the frontline squadron, and that's the squadron that supplies flights uh, to ships. Here he comes now, low and fast, uh, ramping up to about 160 uh, knots, which is about 180 miles an hour, and a very nice welcome bang just to start the solo display. And welcome to the Royal Navy Helicopter Display Team, the Black Cats. <laughs> Starting his cyclic climb, going from 100 feet up to 600 feet in a matter of seconds, slowing down and they'll be doing a nose over before doing a, a 90 degree turn out. I said the aircraft is uh, based, uh, the frontline crew is based with 815 Naval Air Squadron, and this uh, the squadron supplies all the aircraft that are now at sea. So at the moment this year, uh, the squadron has supplied uh, aircraft to ships operating in the Far East, out around uh, both Japan and Australasia, to the Middle East, around the Gulf and the Indian Ocean, in the Mediterranean, in the Baltic, uh, in the Atlantic, and more significantly, in the Caribbean. Many of you will be aware that Hurricane Dorian swept through the Bahamas recently and really devastated the islands. There's a helicopter at the moment based uh, in the Royal Fleet Auxiliary Mounts Bay, and that was one of the first uh, on the scene to provide immediate support to the islands. And they've been moving uh, uh, casualties to hospital, they've been providing water, and food and medical supplies to those remote areas of the islands that have been badly affected by the hurricane. So, in the uh, right-hand seat today is Lieutenant Chris Rebick. He's the, uh, uh, the pilot and he's a qualified helicopter instructor from H25 Squadron. And in the left-hand seat is Lieutenant Commander Gav Reddo, uh, who's an observer and uh, he's the tactician, not only dealing with navigation, but all the tactics associated with all the weapons and the sensors uh, that are on board this new aircraft. I mentioned that the, uh, the Black Cats haven't been out of display for the last three years, and the reason is that with the demise of the Lynx helicopter that went out of service two and a half years ago, the Wildcat has taken over, and there's been a real push to try to get all of the aircrew and engineers trained on the new aircraft to transition them from the Lynx to the Wildcat. Um, helicopter. All of the, uh, the aircrew engineers here today are volunteers. They'll be back at work next week at Yelverton in Somerset. And the, the, uh, com the, just the two aircrew here today are with about nine engineers, which is broadly the same composition of a flight uh, when they're aboard a ship. backwards into a, a over the shoulder turn and then out again for another uh, wing over. I mentioned the uh, weapons and sensors on board. Um, the aircraft has a radar which I'll point out in a moment and an electrical optical device 
and all of those sensors are linked into the weapons that they carry. It's top speed of about 180 to 190 uh, miles an hour. The aircraft weighs about six tons. Uh, that's about 6,250 6, kilograms. It's uh, for its roles, uh, not just maritime attack, but uh, maritime counter-terrorism and uh, with its weapons can carry out anti-surface warfare, anti-submarine warfare, reconnaissance and search, and as I mentioned, movement of stores and personnel. As aircraft comes into, uh, into hover, you can see some of the equipment on it. Uh, on the nose, just above the nose, is the electrical optical device, and just underneath the nose is the radar. And the two linked together means that the aircraft can search out to quite a long range, and then, of course, identify. And identifying what it's looking for and what it's looking at is the most important aspect. As you see there, the aircraft's dipped its nose, shows you the main road to head. The main road to head is a marinized version, and this means that when the aircraft's on the deck of a ship and shut down, all of the rotor blades can be uh, folded back, which will enable the helicopter to be stored inside the hangar of the frigate or the destroyer. As you can imagine, there's not much room on board and it can't be stowed when all the uh, rotors are fully spread. Uh, just underneath uh, the helicopter, which it might be difficult to see, is a thing called deck lock. And that means that when the aircraft lands on uh, a ship, uh, it engages this deck lock down into a grid, a metal grid that's on the flight deck, and that secures uh, the helicopter initially to the ship. And that's very important, especially if you've got, if you've got a few, uh, uh, some sea states, which are causing the ship to move around. As some of the weapons in support of its roles, uh, it carries, uh, at the moment in the latter stage of development, is the future uh, anti-surface guided weapon, the Martlet, which can uh, take out uh, small craft, and the Sea Venom for slightly longer range uh, uh, missiles against uh, vessels up to about a thousand tons, plus torpedoes and depth charges. As the aircraft uh, now comes round <coughs> into its final stages of its manoeuvres, it'll do the tight uh, turn to the right and then bunt up again for another cyclic turn before going into its final wing over. Now I mentioned uh, one of the roles of the aircraft was out in the Caribbean providing disaster relief, but it also um, it also carries out counter narcotic operations. And to do that, uh, they need uh, some weapons to help stop some of these uh, very fast uh, craft which are zipping along the, uh, the sea at about uh, 60 to 70 knots. Now to do this, as he goes into his uh, final wing over, uh, to do this they use a, a head a machine gun, which is a, a half inch calibre gun, and as this, uh, the aircraft comes past, Normally, the, air, uh, the machine gun will be in uh, either the port or the starboard side of the aircraft with the doors back. And from that, the machine gun can fire out uh, over towards the vessel it's trying to stop. Something like this. And that uh, completes the uh, Wildcats uh, demonstration today. As I said, it's been a complete joy uh, to be back at Sir.